want to talk about how to distinguish between um, some similar compounds using IR and NMR. So what I'm going to do is go through these three examples of alkynes and talk a little bit about where, uh, what stretches I'd be looking for and what, how many proton and NMR peaks I would expect to see in these molecules. So if I'm looking at this first one, I would expect to see, well, an alkyne stretch, right? I see the C, bond, C triple bond C, C, C stretch somewhere. And where is that at? That's around 2200 wave numbers. Again, using my uh, tables to do this. I would expect to see sp2 CHs. All right, I see a lot of C, there's CHs here in this benzene ring. I would expect to see sp3 CHs. Those are out here on this methyl group. So these ones would be around 30, 30 maybe. These would be around 29, 50. So it's before even looking at a spectrum, just thinking about this. I see there's an aromatic ring, obviously. So where's that aromatic stretch at? Uh, that's at 1650 and 1550 about. So I'll be looking for that. So these are the things I'd be looking for the IR. These are all things I'm looking for the IR. The next one, so if I labeled these, let's see if I labeled A, B, and C, what would be different about B than C? Well, B doesn't actually have any sp3 CHs. It does have an spch, so which is different. So let's say spch, which is going to be a really strong peak around, I think, 3300 30, there, really sharp. So be on the lookout for that. Otherwise, it has pretty much the same peaks. It'd be hard to identify the difference. What about C? Well, C is going to have sp3 CHs, because it has an sp3 CH. It's going to have aromatic sp2 CHs. It's also going to have an sp CH and the alkyne. So it's kind of the, the difference here, differentiate these two, B and C. C, doesn't, C has sp3 CHs. B does not. A and C can be differentiated because A has sp3 CHs as is this, but A does not have an SPCH. So you can see maybe how we could tell these things apart from each other. The other thing to look at is the number of NMR stretches. So the number of peaks we'd expect. So we'd obviously expect one, two, three, four. Now if I draw these in, H, so and these ones, we expect there to be one, two, three, four different peaks, but we also would probably expect perhaps f an integration for five hydrogens in the aromatic region, which is from 8.5 to 6.5 ppm. So whatever peaks we have, there, we're expecting three, right? we're expecting three down here, but it's definitely worth five hydrogens. How about this one? We'd expect a, a peak, for a, a, a peak for the SPCH that'd be worth one hydrogen, which would be different than this, which is worth three. And we again look at those tables. We expect to have one, two, three, four peaks. But again, this peak will be really indicative. Well, for C, I would expect to have one, two, three, four, five, six peaks. The other big difference here is well, whereas both of these had five aromatic hydrogens, this will only have. 4 H's for the integration around 8.5 to 6.5. So let's take a look at it and see what some of these actual spectrum look like. All right, so for our first one, what are we expecting to see? This is an IR. We expect to see some stuff, the double bond for the, for the aromatic ring, 1650, 1500 around there. We expect to see an alkyne stretch. See that right here. We'd expect to see some sp3 CHs. So there's that right there, sp3 CHs. So sp3 CH, we have our triple bond there. We have our aromatic peaks for the ring. And then right here, we have those sp2 CHs. So that help, that's some things to help identify for this one. We'll label those. What about for its NMR? Well, its NMR, we thought we'd have one two, three, four peaks, but we only have one, two, three peaks. I'm going to add the integrations here, and these will be given to you, of course, so if I do my little integrals, 
this would be worth three hydrogens. This would be worth three hydrogens. And this peak over here would be worth two hydrogens. So either way, what does this tell us? It tells us there's five uh, hydrogens integrating for the aromatic region, which means we have a benzene ring with one thing off of it for five hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five. And we have this peak here at three, right, indicating, right, this is around two, that this matches up for this relative ratios, we'd see this. And we wouldn't necessarily know what this is from this unless we had the set of three unknowns to really kind of figure it out and differ differentiate between them. All right, so now let's look at this one. Now this is different because now the alkyne has a, there's an SPCH involved. And that's pretty shouting out at you. There's a SPCH. Notice there's no SP2CHs, there's just SP3CHs. There's your alkyne. All right, and then there's your benzene ring kind of stretches right there. Big key peak here is this SPCH. You'll, it'll really, you'll really see it. And that's really telling you there's that there. What would the NMR look like? All right, these are not SP3CHs. My fault. These are actually SP2CHs. Well, again, we just see one, two, three, four peaks, but we only see three. Again, the key here is integrations, which you'll be given. This is only worth one hydrogen, three, and two hydrogens. Obviously, if you could zoom in on this and see the splitting, that would help differentiate this. But even just looking at the integrations, you know. And also the frequencies, right? This is the aromatic region. And then if you look at your table, an SPCH from an alkyne shows up right around here. So this would, even though it looks very similar to the last one, the integrations give it away. The one hydrogen here really tells you that that's different than if there was a methyl here, as does the IR. Check a little bit. All right, so our last example kind of combine these. So again, there's your SPCH. Now you got SP2CHs and SP3CHs. I think I messed up before back here. Let me see. All right, but this one you have all of them, SP, SP2, and SP3. Got the alkyne and you got the benzene rings. But again, hard to tell the difference um, what this exactly is without that. Then finally you expect, how many peaks you expect here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Don't see six, but around this aromatic region, the difference here is gonna be this kind of these multiplets, or each with two hydrogens. So that's telling you this is a di-substituted benzene ring. There's two things off the ring. There's four hydrogens in the aromatic region one hydrogen, three hydrogen. So you can tell that there's more going on here with this, and that's how you'd be able to eliminate those other possibilities.